Hi guys, so um, I just wanted to um, do a, a little uh, refresher on how to go about doing uh, literature review searches with NVivo um, and just making a little kind of video thing for you so you could um, have a look at what to do. Um, so, uh, and I thought that this would be a good thing for you to go through before class next week. Um, so anyway, so where we are is we're writing our research proposal. So we're at a stage where we're gathering um, academic work to try and kind of figure out how we can begin to explain what our, how our topic matters. So. Let's say, for example, we're going to do something on media audiences or media users, people who uh, ways of making sense um, of why the things that do with media are either making sense of media or doing stuff with media, why it actually matters. So we talked about this a little bit uh, in, the, uh, in the lectures yesterday, um, but I just want to go over it in kind of a bit more of a coherent fashion and in a way where I can show you actually what to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for ideas, kind of theoretical ideas that we can use to begin to make an argument about why something matters, why some kind of media experience matters. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to open NVivo. And then I'm going to hit create new project. Now obviously we've got a bias here because I'm doing this on a Mac, um, but the steps are essentially the same for a PC as well. And the cool stuff, the thing about the PC is you can actually do more stuff once you've got the data in there. So let's say we're just going to call this audiences. Uh, and I'm just saving it uh, 3732. I'm just going to save it in documents. Obviously, you save it wherever you want to. You hit create. Okay. So this is bringing up. Um, just make this a little bit bigger, I guess. This is bringing up um, a blank uh, uh, example of a video uh, of, a, of a project for NVivo. So what we're going to do is we're going to put information in here. So um, if you click on data here, so NVivo again is kind of a way of ordering your ordering information, and you can either do that with you can do it with social media data, you can do it with academic readings, uh, or you can do it with uh, evidence about you know, transcripts, interviews, those sorts of things. But in this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to use NVivo to um, make sense of annotated bibliographies. So the assumption is that you've started off. And you've made, um, you've collected a series of sources, and you're trying to think, well, what do I need to do? What do I need to read more about? So we hit on here on PDF, and I've got my annotated bibliography for audiences right, right down here, and I click on this. So this right here is a data set that I'm going to start working on. So now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, well, obviously um, this is just an annotated bibliography. It's a collection of readings that you've um, collected from uh, the library website. So this is kind of a, a first draft of a read, if you like. What you're going to do is you're going to go through these, these articles, read the abstracts and figure out um, which ones are worth reading and why are they worth reading and what are the ideas that are in here and how can you use this to begin to structure um, your proposal. So we kind of went through this uh, yesterday. So this is where the NVivo, NVivo coding and annotation functions become really, really useful. Um, so we're sitting down and we're going, well, you know, why should we study the things that ordinary people do with, with media? So this first um, article, for example, transnational audience receptions, a theater of struggle, young Filipino women's reception of Korean television dramas. So the title alone tells us that kind of you know, this, this idea of 
theatre reception as theatre of struggle. Um, this idea that there's some kind of conflict going on when people are sitting down to be entertained. So that's kind of an interesting idea. So we might want to think about what this means a little bit more. Um, and then obviously down here, um, if I was looking in here, I would, I would look at this, I'd say mainly anchored on Gramsci's concept of hegemony and Stuart Hall's encoding deep gelding theory, the researcher conducted a reception analysis. So our key, um, our key idea and then also focus groups, okay? So how could we begin to make sense of this? Well, the first thing we could do is, suppose I, I, I have a look at this and I'm looking for, for important concepts. Um, we've got the concept of hegemony. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to right click it. And I'm going to hit new annotation. So I'm beginning through this function to build myself tasks that I'm going to do when I do my further reading. What is hegemony? It's obviously a key concept. If I read this, the first thing I need or want to be able to do is make sure that I understand what it is. Then we're done with that, okay? Now, you'll see it's highlighted there. And then if we move over to the left over here and we see our annotation, we'll see that this is saved, okay? So after I've gone through all of my reading, I'll have established, if we click on this, for example, you'll see that pops up. So this is a way of gathering our thoughts and identifying tasks that we have to, to do whilst we're going through this very initial reading. Okay. All right. Now, over here, we have a thing called, if we um, also click our Analyze tab, we've kind of got this idea that we need to be uh, looking for two things. We need to be looking for theories and we also need to be looking for methods. We need to be looking at ideas that explain how media matter and ways of actually researching that. So the first thing we've got here is encoding decoding theory and we've probably heard of that before because that's quite a well-known um, a well-known idea in media research. So if we highlight this If I right click this, I'm going to turn this into what's called a node. And a node is like a container. Um, now, of course, there's a lot of uh, tutorials on how to do this in NVivo. Um, and it's worth having a look at those tutorials. What I'm trying to do here is kind of show how all of this applies to um, this particular unit. So hopefully between those two sort of resources, you'll be able to figure it out. But here, I'm going to think, well, we know that encoding decoding, for example, is a pretty important idea that runs through a lot of media research. So I probably want to be looking for places that discuss it, that give me a better sense of what it means and how you can use it. So I'm going to create this as a node. I'm going to create it as a new node. I'm going to click on there. This box uh, opens up. Encoding and decoding. Uh, it doesn't let me do the slash. <coughs> and then Something like that. 
no, not reception, search um, of and done. Now, if we go over to nodes now, we'll see we've got this. Now, another neat little thing that you might want to do is um, actually divide this down into subcategories. If you click it, so what I've done is I've right clicked on this, and I've created a new node. Now imagine we call this first one theory. So here I'm going to gather all of the evidence about what does the model suggest about how media power works? Then I'm going to click on this again, another new node, and I call this one method. And I'm going to say, this is where I'm going to gather everything I can find on how people have used the model as a method. So then I'm going to um, look a little bit more deeply at this particular uh, at this particular abstract. And I'm going to see what this can tell us about whether it's worth reading or not. Um, and I can begin to get some clues about why this matters. Um, because if I read down here, and I read this this here. While there were young, uh, while um, there were young female participants who subscribed to global capitalist values, showing their co-optation within Western cultural hegemonic domains, the young women largely articulated negotiated readings of capitalist values and oppositional readings with regard to the dominant ideology of capitalist patriarchy. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of technical jargon in there. Um, but I can begin to use this to begin to write down some thoughts on why audiences matter. So what I might do here is I might add in an annotation and I might sit here and I think, well, what does that actually mean? And what it means here is, for example, here's an example of how people take positions on global political issues while they are being entertained. So why is that significant? Well, this is an example of um, why popular culture matters. Okay, so we might even want to turn this into a no too. Because you know, one of the big questions we've got, one of the big issue challenges we've got is figuring out, well, why should we take any of this stuff seriously? So we want to find examples um, to illustrate the point we're going to make. Um, so we might turn this into, and obviously I've got my little typo there. So uh, yeah, we might um, want to use that um, in our writing of our proposal. And we might also want to think as we're, as we're moving along, well, maybe here, what I need to do is I also need to code this selection. Do this again. I want to code this selection at a new node. I want to call this Reasons why popular culture 
matters politically. So what I'm saying here is, so if I do that, then in this node, this is a place where I can begin to gather all of the places where I encounter explanations for how popular culture matters. Then the other thing, uh, for example, that we could do here is there's mention in here of uh, focus groups. Um, where was it? I read that just before. Yeah, focus group discussions with young Filipino women in different colleges. Can you guess where I'm going to code this? I'll give you a second. Okay, in this case, we're getting a few nodes here. So I'm going to hit add existing nodes. I'm going to open out encoding, decoding. And I'm going to stick this one under method. Why? Well, because what we've learned here is that focus group research is one of the things that uses the encoding, decoding model. Now the other thing I'm going to want to do as I move along is I want to I want to sort of be recording because when I come back to the document I want to know where particular items are coded at particular in particular places. So I'm going to highlight all nodes coding here. What you'll see here is that when you come back to um, to read um, that the, the overall document that you can actually find the places that are talking about the specific things that you want to look for. I'm going to save the file. So The next thing I might want to do is kind of look down and think, well, what else is going on in terms of encoding, decoding, and methods? So I start trawling through. And I come down to David Morley, Unanswered Questions and Audience Research. I want to have a look at this um, because this is David Morley is one of the first people to use the encoding decoding model. So I kind of want to know what he has to say about media audiences and why they matter. And again, I suppose, and the other thing is, is that this has methodologies and audience research. It doesn't really tell us a great deal about it, but it also tells us about the strengths and limitations of the encoding decoding model. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm just going to code this selection at existing nodes. I'll do theory and method. Because one of the things that this tells me is that this is something that tells me a lot about the um, the value of the uh, the model both on a theoretical and a methodological uh, level and then what I'm actually going to do the other thing is we've got methodologies and audience research so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut and paste this particular link. I'm going to go into the library and I'm going to download it and I'm going to store it in here. Insert it as a PDF in the same way as I've done with this. And then I'm going to start analyzing that to look for particular methods. So this is just a kind of a short version of the uh, going over how to set about 
um, doing the uh, using in vivo to begin to gather ideas and identify things that you need to know about using a particular uh, using a particular um, uh, data set. I'm going to leave that here for now. Um, I'm going to do another uh, module a little bit later on about um, further developments in this. So I hope that helps.